October 4th, 2022, calling the West Liberty City Council meeting to order. Uh, we have it present today, uh, Council Member Omar Martinez, yes. Dana Dominguez, yes. myself, Kara McFerrin, also serving as Mayor Pro Tem, Josh Schultz Costa, and yes. uh, Ashley Smith. Yes. Uh, also in attendance, we have uh, Sherry, Deputy Clerk Sherry Hopert, City Manager Dave Hovlin, and City Clerk Lee Gertz, as well as um, Police Chief Eric Worley. Okay, uh, we'll move on to approval of agenda. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve the agenda. Is there any discussion on the approval of agenda? Hearing none, can I have um, uh, all, all in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries, <laughs> approval of the agenda, approval of consent agenda. It'll be the city council meeting minutes. There's a motion for consent agenda. Yeah. For a second. A second. Okay. Do we have any discussion on this the meeting, the city council meeting minutes? Hearing none. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, consent agenda passed. Vendor vouchers claims list. Is there a motion to approve vendor vouchers claims list? Motion to approve vendor voucher claims list. Is there a second? Second, second. Is there any discussion with regards to the vendor vouchers claims list? Hearing none, uh, do we uh, all approve vendor vouchers? Say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, approval of vendor vouchers. Okay, we'll move on to public comments and or correspondence. Again, I just think it's important to mention, uh, I will allow uh, public comments at a two minute limit. And I also wanted to make mention the fact that uh, the city council meetings are meeting of and by the governing body, which is the city council, okay? So it is a meeting held in public, but it is not a meeting of the public. That is very important to recognize. So therefore, we won't be engaging in any back and forth dialogue because it is reserved time to listen to the concerns and the viewpoints of the public that come before us. So we owe their owe them uh, undivided attention. And on top of that, any answers or discussion um, offered can generally uh, dip into can be very difficult because it can dip into uh, uh, giving accurate responses on critical or complex issues where there might be um, research or data that has to be gathered. So therefore, that's another reason. We're just utilizing this time for a public to give a response. Do we have anybody in the public who wants to discuss, has a concern, has a viewpoint, has questions, you're welcome to ask. And then we can forward your comments on to city administration. Uh, yes, the gentleman in the front row. State, please state your name and your address if you can for record. I am Clifford McFerrin representing Simpson Memorial Hall at 1000 North Miller Street, but I live at 411 Street. I only need about five minutes of your time. Two minutes is the amount of time that we have Thank you. limited. I have a great appreciation for the fire department. They responded to 
Keith Manor on the 23rd Friday evening. And I believe you were there. I couldn't tell. Were you not there? It was a lot of folks that were there. Keith Manor had smoke reported about 9, 930. We had, I know, West Liberty Adolescent. I believe Nichols was there, but I, if I'm wrong, correct me. I think Nichols may have responded also. Um, we had a, a lady that had uh, burned a pizza in the oven, and below that was a plastic spoon. Uh, and it took a little while for us to figure out if she had opened her apartment, and the apartment air had blown into the hallways, but the fire department stayed until we figured out what it was. And I give them huge credit because several folks, uh, the smaller folks, went down to the crawl space, all underneath there, went up into the attics. Because in 2004, if you recall, for those of you who are here, Keith Manor got hit by lightning. We lost six apartments. Everybody stayed. And we had all the residents gathered, tenants gathered in the commons area, ready to evacuate in the event that we needed to. Um, at 9.30 at night, it was a pajama party, but it still was fun. They, I just, my heart goes out to them, and we'd like to show our appreciation. We'll be delivering a gift to the, each fire department from Simpson Memorial Home. But thank you again, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you. Is there any other public comments? Yes. Ken. Well, no concerns for me tonight. Just a couple of uh, items I'd like to put on the record. My name is Ken Brooks. I'm here representing Wheelie. We're 19 East 3rd Street. Uh, two items of significance today. First of all, the West Liberty Community School District held the groundbreaking for the brand new athletic complex this afternoon. It was a wonderful event uh, marked by speeches from school administration and, and community leaders. So I, I think several of you were able to make that. So thank you for coming to that. It's a really exciting project that's going to have uh, tremendous implications for the growth of West Liberty uh, here starting next year and, and moving forward. So very excited about that project. The other thing I'd like to give a lot of credit where credit's due, we've had one of our own community members recognized today. I don't know if you saw the press release, but uh, Father Guillermo Trevino Jr. Uh, was announced today re is receiving a national award. So it, it, if I can just read this, he will be receiving the National Cardinal Bernadine New Leadership Award, uh, which is an activity of the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, recognizing the leadership, energy, and diverse skills that young people bring to anti-poverty work and low-income projects across Catholic parishes across the country. So that's a really big deal. And I think next month he'll be flying out to Baltimore receive that award um, and while we won't be going with them i think the spirit of west liberty certainly will so just wanted to hear that to you tonight thank you thank you any other public comments questions views concerns is there anything on anyone online anybody on remote access that has a Comment, concern. I'm having a report time. I have not received any um, chat or communication or public comment. Okay, then I'll move to uh, individual council members. Does anybody have anything to share you received from anybody in the community? Somebody mentioned to me in passing that they really appreciated um, Jacob's city rundown um, after each meeting and that, that that was a great PR and, and update thing. So I just thought I'd pass that along. People are reading it and appreciating it. Yeah, it is very helpful. Anybody else? Or did you find? Um, yes. So I was contacted, we got an email letting us know that um, the, it was the same day today that Father Camino Junior was awarded, was awarded or um, notified that he had won award that the USA announced that, um, let's see, I want to make sure I have it accurate. So. They're going to 
they they provided a grant she and I guess um uh, to Catholic Charities USA for more than nine million dollars of which is going to be providing it's Jimmy Rose who is a sub um, recipient part of the grant will um, bring in more than one million dollars of federal pandemic relief money to rural Eastern Iowa to benefit nearly 2,000 essential food production workers. And uh, Father Trevino said that uh, they will plan to identify and distribute $600 relief checks to 1,800 meat packing plant workers and farm workers in Columbus Junction, West Liberty in Washington, Iowa. And it should be a press release coming out, if not already, about that in the next couple of days. So that was exciting to hear. Very exciting. Very good. Is there any other public comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to old business. And I want to go ahead and move on to resolution. 2022-2004-19, a resolution providing, or a resolution approving for the notice of intent to fill the West Liberty Mayor by appointment. Whereas the City Mayor Catherine McCullough has resigned in position effective 9-21-2022, and whereas the Council wishes to proceed with due speed to fill this vacancy, now therefore be it resolved by the City Council and the City of West Liberty, the city council has determined it to be in the best interest of the city to fill the mayor vacancy created by the resignation of Catherine McCullough by appointment of the council members in accordance with Iowa Code Section 372.132A. Section 2, the city council is authorized and directed to publish notice of intent to appoint in the time and in the manner as required by law. So... Do, is there a motion? Motion to approve resolution number 2022-1004-19. Is there a second? Yeah, second. second. Okay. Is there any discussion? So just note, we're, or the city will be using the same process that we uh, used to fill uh, Former Testament Diane Baronic's position as well as former Testament Jose Zacharias. Uh, the intent is to have the ad in the paper uh, this week on the 6th. Uh, we'll receive interest from parties by the 19th of October. And the hope would be that if we can get it narrowed down, that uh, we have the council and mayor work session scheduled for the 24th with uh, Pat Callahan. We'd like to maybe have a special council meeting to appoint the mayor. Prior to that training, so the new mayor could be a part of that training. And that's on the October 24th? Yes. Is after the session with? We would actually do that before the session. Oh. We would try to do a uh, special council meeting around 5 p.m. Now, I have a question. Yes. Since it's an appointment, those who want to run for mayor don't have to do like with what? Others did to get petition to get signatures. No, they would and all just that, need right? to express their interest, tell us why they think they're qualified, you know, just kind of basically what Josh okay. and Ashley did. Yeah, okay. the same process. Okay. And this would be filling the vacancy until December 31st of 2023. Okay. Okay. And when is, I'm sorry, when is the deadline? The 19th. 19th. Okay. Uh, is there any any other discussion? Hearing none, this is going to be roll call vote. Uh, Council Member Martinez, mm -hmm. Council Member Dominguez, yes, I can vote, right? <laughs> Council Member, I say yes. Council Member Schultz, yes. Council Member uh, Smith, yes. Okay, uh, motion passes. Okay, uh, under new business now, we have resolution 2220930-20. It's a resolution authorizing the West Liberty City Clerk to submit the urban renewal report. 
Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to pass approve the resolution. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? Looks busy. It, yeah. <laughs> it, keep in mind for the, the new um, folks here on council that there have been renewals of program or construction to replace and restore um, outdated or um, substandard building construction in our town, as well as for a uh, better utilization of uh, existing purpose infrastructure, housing, or business opportunities. Does that pretty much sum it up? What allows us to do the tip points? Yeah, mm -hmm. we're taxing yeah. permanent finance and abatement reporting to the state. Is there uh, any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, this is a roll call vote as well. Uh, Council Member Smith? Yes. Council Member Schultz? Yes. I say yes. Council Member Dominguez? Yes. Council Member Martinez? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Uh, move on to uh, B under new business resolution 2022 1004 21, resolution to approve reimbursement to WLFE incorporated in the amount of $25,000. West Liberty Economic Development Matching Grant Funds for Building Renovation Project at 115 East 3rd Street. Do I have a motion? Uh, a second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Um, um, but no, go, you go. I, we're asking the same thing. I was just going to have um, either city manager Hoglin or city clerk Gertz kind of go over this. Yeah, I, uh, okay. Frank Bailey or Emily Gertz, and I don't remember the last name. Wagner, they are WLFE, and they did the work there at 115 East 3rd. Uh, it's got the Liberty uh, Public House in the back, and Sarah Sedlicek has her office in the front. So there's a matching grant of 25000 but this resolution does and will uh, reimburse them for twenty-five thousand. Maybe got more than that into the project. Uh, we don't have all the receipts in yet, but what we're doing is having you approve it tonight, subject to getting the receipts in. Once we get those, then we'll be able to uh, cut them their check for their reimbursement. Because uh, if you recall, last year they had been approved to receive this grant, and that was my question because I remember you included the check. Yeah. The last one that yep. I didn't see at this one. Well, so that it, explains it, it. It wasn't for a lack of me trying to get the information from them. They just had, I think they're probably busy, or Emily had been in the field. So yep. uh, but they had submitted the stuff of the request. We just didn't have all the documents. So we wanted to go ahead and okay. process it subject to receiving all the documents. Okay. So uh, we have motion second. This is going to be roll call vote. Uh, Council Member Martinez? Yes. Council Member Dominguez? Yes. I vote yes. Council Member Schilt? Yes. Council Member Smith? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Uh, move on to resolution 222, 1004-22, resolution to approving City of West Liberty Bank authorization with South Ottumwa Savings Bank and Office of West Liberty State Bank. We have a motion to approve. Motion to approve resolution 2022-104-22. And do we have a second? A second. Yeah. Okay. And um, I'm going to open up for discussion. If if this serves correctly, is it just basically to make sure we are in accordance with our signers correct for the bank? Okay. Yep. It it's um it's in place of a corporate resolution. Okay. Um, so we, it's um, the official document from the city council to the bank in place of that. Okay. I have a question though. Since Kara is the mayor pro tem, mm -hmm. which who is the backup to the mayor? Who is the backup to Kara? Okay. Hey. <laughs> I just wanted to understand yeah. that. Yeah, I've I've been the second signer to the mayor's signature, and Sherry's typically the second signer to leave now. In the case of where if there's like a reimbursement check for me for like mileage, which 
uh, I, I, I've received. I don't sign those. Typically, Sherry will take that second okay. signature. Thank you. Okay. And this again is going to be roll call vote as well. Uh, Council Member Smith? Yes. Council Member Schultz? Yes. I vote yes. Council Member Dominguez? Yes. Council Member Martinez? Yes. Okay. All, all passed. Um, resolution 22. The next under D under new business is to set the City Council work session for October 18th. And that again will be here, correct? Yes, we'll be here. At, we're looking at 6 30. And the topic that we'd like to bring is we've been working with a different financial uh, company, uh, Nate Summers, who is with UMB uh, Bank. Uh, he's been working with Lee and I, putting some numbers together, and we'll have Leo here as well. Uh, we want to bring you up to date with some things that we're working with Nate for the uh, financing options for the uh, Rainbow and Maxim project. Okay, and it's just to update us on our financing. Yeah, um, Nate's got some documents that, that he's kind of put together, and he'll kind of walk through those and answer any council questions that, that you have, uh, you know, based on where our finances are, are going. And, and then looking as we're putting out that new debt, he'll kind of show how that affects uh, the city as a well. whole. Okay, well, that'll be at 6.30, 6.30, and then we'll roll right into um, council meeting at 7.30. Yes. Anybody else have any comments, suggestions, discussion? Yes. Uh, hearing none, I guess, do we need uh, consent? Okay. Uh, Madam Mayor, for time I need a motion and a second to move it to okay. consent. I'll motion to approve the work session for 6.30 on the 18th. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Under reports. Okay. So do we have, I think we have Leo on. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Foley. Okay. For us. So, so I'll be ready for um, the the um, work session with Mr. Nate Summers um, on Maxon and Rainbow and the construction for that cost, as well as the um, the electrical that will will have to probably be bonded for. Also, in the next couple of weeks before that, I'd like to get to to um, the city manager the design contract for the wastewater treatment plant improvements and the design contract for the um, well number two improvements. So that at least every, he has everything in his hands at that meeting on things that are coming up. And that's all I had today, unless you have questions. Does anybody have any questions for a city engineer? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What about um, any committee meetings, task force? Do we have anything to report as far as staff meeting minutes, anything like that? Just if anybody has any question regarding any of the staff uh, minutes uh, from the different firms, we have any questions on other things. I have one question. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And you received that. We received a report from the fire chief, so you should have that as well. Um, I have a question. So I and I remember Nick talking about this a while ago about surveillance cameras. Yes. Um, needing that conversation is that something that the council just needs to put on the agenda to discuss, or it's and probably, have Nick come it, talk? It's to probably it? something that we want to take to the finance committee. Uh, okay. Nick, Nick has got the prices together. We we'll want to just probably visit with the finance committee, and I know that Lee's working on getting a meeting set up mm -hmm. for that, and uh, we we could invite Nick to come in and talk about what he's got for the different locations okay. and we'll figure out how we're going to pay for all of that. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was also something that falls under public safety or is it mainly finance? Okay. okay. I, I want to make sure that we can pay for it. Yeah. yeah. That's the but, strategy. Yeah. <laughs> it always comes down to money first. Yeah. And there are grades. 
yeah. that you can apply for as well because when they came in to do our insurance stuff she let us know that there's grants i think it's only like a thousand dollars but it would be yeah. something towards it so that's something we can also look at okay and uh we'll be having a you guys are going to be setting up a finance committee soon. Hopefully next correct? week. I, I know Ashley has responded yeah. back. And, yeah, and the, I'll, I'll go up based on what Ashley has provided and give you those either yeah. tonight or tomorrow. Okay. And I noticed under the clerk's report, we were looking at digitizing records. How close are we on that or what is the status? Um, we are in the early stages of having the discussion what um, Deputy Clerk and I um, started the discussion so we can um, get some quotes and um, those would be in the upcoming budget. Okay. Um, if we find that dependent on the project that we start with, if we've got capacity in our current budget, then we will structure it into phases. Um, our primary focus right now is uh, retention for payroll is 70 years. So we have a lot of um, records. documents, uh, archive documents pertaining to payroll. And so that's our primary focus. And I would just add that Monday, October 10th, the city hall um, administration will be closed uh, due to an in-service uh, as we're organizing and prepping that work with the uh, archives. Okay, so the city hall will be closed that day. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead. Uh, I have a committee update if we're even there yet, or is that later? Um, well, I did have one question on the deputy city clerk's report. On is it? Are we having issues with items being left on the street corners, the street right of way? Yes. So okay. I worked with Jacob to get something put out okay. there um, to let people know because people asked if they could still leave it out there for pickup, which you can, but once it sits out there for about two to three days, when our officers are driving around and see it, then they get it to me and it becomes a nuisance violation. That's when those notices go out. Um, okay. A lot of times when people put it on the curb, it's typically picked up pretty quickly. Um, but right now we have a lot of people just putting stuff out on the curb and I don't know if they are thinking we're going around picking it up. So we wanted to be proactive and let them know that we can pick it up. You just have to call City Hall so that we can get that taken care of. Okay. Um, yeah, then we can move on to com committee task force, committee meetings. Um, so the Fire and EMS task force, special task force met last night. And I think Monday, yeah. And, um, we discuss a lot of things, but I think the next steps are that Dave was going to check in with Tech Callahan to see if we can have another meeting um, to help us in the process to get things, to get a lot of questions answered that we had. And um, so he's going to be working on that as well as Mindy has volunteered graciously to start drafting out a charter um, that we can um, get. Uh, the to bring back to the task force to look at um, so we can get that um, in the works as well. And I think Eric was going to start on the program plan or the project project, yeah, project plan. plan. Project yep. plan. Eric um, yeah. is going to start drafting out a project plan um, so that we can um, be more intentional on creating some deadlines and having one place to go to um, check our work and and to make those task lists and punch lists and things like that. Mm -hmm. I have to get there. No, I think so. I think that's about what we discussed. I have a question. Um, this is on the uh, on the police report. So this is interview the certified officer for our open position. Like, did we make a hire? Does is there anything we're supposed to know or we need to do? Or uh, I'm afraid that the salary he's seeking is something we cannot provide. Okay. And he said that he would not come for less than he's currently making. Okay. Anybody else? Was there any other committee meetings? And Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I would just add um, that uh, Sergio Guerrero has um, announced his resignation. And I believe I have that in our notes, but I just wanted to 
make that known to the public. Um, he has provided excellent customer service, um, worked very diligently to learn processes quickly, um, and, but he has decided to uh, take an opportunity with Elcom with Liberty Communications. So we will be going back to Liberty Communications. Mm -hmm. So we have posted the administrative position and I think we've probably got at least 20 applicants. We have about 30, 30. Yeah, that's awesome. right. So, okay. And the report it says I have concerns is it has been difficult to sustain staff due to the current environment and the difficult customers who are yelling and cursing with staff. Is this are we experiencing like greater turnover than we normally do in staff? And is there anything that we can do about it? Um, just the continual, and I worked on a, a PR piece today um, um, with the city manager for a review and our communication. I think it's just the continual. Uh, education to the uh, to customers mm -hmm. um, that the uh, staff are doing their jobs. Um, we, we train and we work with our staff to help them understand that not to take it personal. Uh, unfortunately, um, men, you know, they're day in and day out, they're receiving um, some pretty harsh communication from customers and do we document those incidents at all? So it, it's beyond keeping up with. Got it. Okay. So and and that has um, caused in the last two years some uh, transition and turnover, um, just because of some negative uh, social media communications, misinformation, or you know just the environment as a whole post pandemic. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the only thing that we can do on our part is uh, continue to train and work with. And I think that because we're moving into um, a new realm of things, I think that uh, customer services itself is going to have to change. And there is an expectation that's going to need to be set with uh, customers as well as, you know, in order to receive service or have your questions answered. Um, if there is an expectation by the customer to be treated with respect and professionalism, then the communication needs to start um, from that customer as well in order to make it a, a positive and productive. Uh, because there's many times we've had to direct staff to uh, disconnect from a phone call or um, disconnect from serving an individual. Um, and we've probably had to have more discussions with our police department with personal safety. Um, and that's that's truly, a given my uh, years of experience working in uh, banking and this government, that's, this is the first I've ever seen uh, some really negative and harsh. I think the hope is that, you know, if we get this piece out and, and give it out on our website as well as our social media, and I think that's a piece that we're gonna have to put out regularly for a while you know, like weekly or bi-weekly, just to try to remind people that, you know, please come in and respect our folks and you'll get that same respect back because that's what they're trying to do. And that, frankly, they are doing what they've been told to do and how to act, but it gets, it, it gets tough for folks when on a daily basis, you've got people, you know, mm -hmm. chewing on the rear end all day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, our, I, know, I think our staff does very good and they, you know, do do a good job, but it does take its wear and tear. So that's mm -hmm. what we've got to try on. So within also being a um again, they're also, you know, attacked it. The local, you know, we promote to support our local businesses and our local events and um to be a part of the community, mm -hmm. you know, because you are a part of the community, you know, you're a community member as well as an employee of the city. Uh, but that is also that there's no, you know, break for them as they go out into the community and, you know, they're treated, you know, harshly or statements are made or um, or questions are asked with, well, if you don't know the answer, then you don't know your, do you know, you don't know your job. And um, yeah, so, so hopefully we, we're in hopes to turn it around and ask us all to play nicely together. Right, right, I agree. I mean, if we 
get, are showing decorum and respect to individuals, it's only fair that they reciprocate that as well. And because one person may not have the answers, if they submit, you know, a question with their contact info, I'm sure somebody that does will be able to get back with them. There's no real reason to be verbally abusing people. And that front staff, um, that's where the turnover has been happening. And that is, that's where I started. And that probably is the most difficult area to be in. Um, so just, I know the one thing that they ask for is just support in general, um, is just having like somebody, if you ask them how they're doing, they will tell you they're not going to like try to hide it because it's very clear when you walk in that very front line is very tired to say the least. They're very worn down. And unfortunately, they're the ones that are there in the front. So they're the ones that take the most abuse. Mm -hmm. People come in mad, they're upset or they get a bill, they're upset they're calling and they, they take that on that first person. And unfortunately, it's on frontline staff. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's not fair to them. Do they ever get to the, the opportunity to receive any kind of like training in de-escalation or, or conflict resolution or anything? Like, is there anything that we can do to support them with their skills to, to help mediate that? We've had, we've had trainings. Um, I can honestly say the current staff has not had the opportunity uh, simply because we're not able to maintain staffing levels in order to, to do that. And um, the other side of it is our, our workload is extremely high. We process an incredible amount of work on a daily basis with a limited amount of staff. Right. Um, we did establish a, um, we had a meeting this last week, we went over. Um, we are going to look at um, planning a monthly meeting, closing um, the city hall. We're just gonna have to take that time for our staff and ask the community to understand that we are looking to close, you know, an additional hour so we can have that, that training. Um, we're looking at some mental wellness uh, training to go along with that. And de-escalation is something we have, you know, internal, um, individuals that I chief that we can you know lean on for those things as well but mm -hmm. um at the end of the day when you have a customer that's not going to stop because they're just as passionate and they're just as upset and they truly believe what they believe is correct um it, it's just sometimes it's better to end the conversation and take a breath and and hand it off to management for us to to follow through with that, so. Is it possible, I know you said that the, the balance of number of staff and the work that needs to be done is, is really disproportionate. Is it possible to hire more staff or do we have open positions and just no one's applying for them? Is there a shortage of applicants or is we it- We don't like, have budget capacity. Got it, okay. We do not have the budget capacity to carry what for, so because of the utilities, mm -hmm. um, we operate at the size of a city of 10,000 people because okay. of our utilities and all the other services we provide. Mm -hmm. But in all essence, we are a tax base mm -hmm. of 3,800. Yeah, so that limits our amount of what we get from our tax base. Right, because it's not just within our department. I mean, it's all of our departments across. We, I mean, it was through the nature of our um, history and the manufacturing that we have in this town to, that has, that has driven us to the point where we are today with the quality of services we offer it, it, and the fact that we own most all of our utilities. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing we don't own is, our, is the gas, but we actually own our own utilities we have a grade four wastewater treatment plant that can actually service a town of 10 to 20,000. You know, technically that's what they're for. So we, we definitely have a lot of advantage, but we also have a lot of responsibility with that. So we're, we're kind of like trying to learn how to drive a stick shift. <laughs> You got to put on the accelerator. Wait, you got to put on the brake. You got to put on the accelerator. <laughs> and now we lost the driver of the wheel. <laughs>
Thank you for the context. But so yeah, but we're we're very unique that way. Very unique. Um, I don't think there is another town such as ours with the type of characteristics really it make it challenging when you're trying to do wage comparisons and yeah. um you know mm -hmm. staffing level comparisons and so because we i mean we ran a lot of scenarios we ran different scenarios on how we can uh you know process the work or or divvy the work up i mean um outside of throwing it in a pile in the morning and we all just jump in and and do it uh, because even within with Sergio uh, leaving, then that moves Sherry and I. I mean, we'll be covering days at the front line, receding, and so you know, in turn, that's why we say you know that's going to impact you know our work as well. Um, so I mean, again, we do. I mean, we do that for a team, uh, but at the same time, it's you know it it, it impacts the day to day operations. Um, of that work that we have limited time to turn reports around and, and create documentation and and the customers are our number one priority is making sure we're serving them first. And that's also with Sergio leaving, there's going to be, he was handling other duties, not just mm -hmm. the cashiering portion that we're going to have to figure out how to divvy those up for the time being until we get somebody else in there. So it's going to be a lot of work to restructure some things and we have a brand new staff essentially because everybody's in a brand new position other than myself and Lee. So we will be working with them. I can do that. <laughs> we just doing the best we can with what we have. Is there any other comments? Um miscellaneous. I know that um outside of October 10th, is there any other days upcoming month that we're going to be having any adjustments to the city hall hours or anybody going to be out of office i will be out um originally uh, the utility building clerk and myself we're going to go to imf away um with this turnover in staff i will be going these in assembly so that we have someone there and so i will be out of the office the 18th 19th 20th and then I'll be back the 21st, I believe. So the Iowa Municipal Finance Association. Oh, like there's one more word in there. Thank you. Yeah. That's um, a program by ISU Extension with the League of Cities, uh, similar to your MLA yes, leadership. Mm -hmm. And so that is um certifications uh for your clerks. Um, for your city. Hmm. Um, I did want to let everybody know I did sign up for on October 11th, me and I think city manager Hovland uh, it also signed up to attend a solar energy discussion for municipalities. They're having that at a, the Boyd Law um, College at, on the University of Iowa campus. So it'll be an all day meeting and we'll just learn about the different avenues of utilizing solar in municipalities. Um Ashley, do you still need volunteers for Saturday? Um I haven't checked the volunteer sign up in 24 hours, but I think we're doing okay. Okay, good. Just going to bring that up while we're live. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else? Hearing none, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Why here second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Meeting adjourned.